What is going on everybody, Zonic here, and in today's video, happy Pokemon Day, by the way, if you guys are watching this short after release, today was Pokemon Day, hope you guys enjoyed the announcement there for all the new games coming, um, and uh, today I'm going to be running the number one top performing team from PV Poke. I think the uh, top performers is a great list for you all to reference throughout the season uh, to get some ideas, maybe give some teams some try. And this was a team that was number one performing. It is going to be normal Dragonair, so not Shadow, Lantern, and Vigoroth. Uh, what I saw with this team, mind you, this was in the 28, 2900 range. Uh, what I saw with this team, it was uh, very consistent and very strong against the meta outside of one Pokemon, which gave this team a lot of trouble, and I'm sure you guys can imagine which one that was. That was Annihilate. So, uh, this team does very well outside of that. Annihilate teams, I, I got shredded pretty hard, especially when it's aligned uh, to the Vigoroth, which is what happened. So, hope you guys enjoy. This team's really strong outside of Annihilate. And let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, getting into the first battle, Dragonair, Whizcash. This is a very good lead for us, and what it most likely means is they have a Skarmory in the back, as uh, that core is very strong this season, which is why we do see them swap the Skarmory in. This is already a red flag to me. If someone safe swaps a Skarmory, uh, there is another flyer back there. You don't just safe swap a Skarmory uh, just because, right? The, the whole goal of it is to probably draw out the Bass Udons and uh, Lanterns, which is what they do, right? My Lantern is going to be coming out onto the field. I'm going to look to go for Surf here instead of Thunderbolt. The reason being is I want to get a lot of energy um, if I can in order to farm down. That way the Whizcash here, which does have a Mud Bomb ready to go, has to throw right away because they won't be able to farm me down and I'll have a Surf ready to go for them. So we're going to go ahead and look to throw the Surf if it is charge attack priority, uh, which is going to be. Whizcash is going to take it. That's totally fine with me. This gives Dragonair the upper, the upper hand in that matchup. And then uh, we'll have to see what they have in the back as we're going to go ahead and go for a body slam here for neutral damage. My guess is it might be another flyer. Um, obviously, there's a lot of flyers out there that it could be, and sure enough, it is. It's going to be Talonflame. So it makes a lot of sense why my opponent did safe swap a Skarmory. Not a traditional safe swap, but when you see that, it's automatically got to bring the red flag up for you to recognize there is two flyers on this team. Um, and a uh, Fire Flyer makes a lot of sense because it's very weak to Bastiodon. So we're just going to go ahead and shred it apart with Dragon Breath and Aqua Tail. Uh, I know Shadow Dragonair is very popular this season, but uh, Normal Dragonair uh, does great as well. It's a bit more bulky. It's not as offensive weighted uh, because of the Dragon Breath damage, but it can survive a lot longer, which can also be very beneficial in some of these matchups. As you guys are going to see, if I was Shadow in this case, maybe I don't survive long enough there. So now we're going to see the Whizcash come in. Obviously, we still have Vigoroth in the back. The Dragonair here with Body Slam is going to do quite a bit of damage, and that's going to be a good game. The Whizcash is just going to go ahead and let us farm it down, and uh, that is going to be a good game to my opponent. Obviously, I had good answers for that line, which is a meta line this season. All right, moving to the next one. Jellicent on the lead. The only times I have seen Jellicent on the lead has been paired with Bassudon and Lickitung. That is also a top performing team. I believe it was made by Kayla Peng, which makes a lot of sense. Um, but that team has been very popular, and that's the only time I see Jellicent. Now, if you see the Pokemon on the lead, you don't want to automatically assume that the back two Pokemon are going to be what you think they are. But now that I see the Lickitung come in, Obviously, I'm starting to uh, to play the game of odds and guess that it is going to be Bastiodon in the back, which Lantern can handle that situation. We do have access to Surf. We are quite bulky, so SmackDown isn't doing as much damage. And the matchup here with Vigoroth into Lickitung is very advantageous for us. We're going to be resisting those fast moves. We're going to be doing quite a bit of damage with Counter and Body Slam. We can come out of here with Energy for a Rock Slide versus the Jellicent. It's a very great matchup for us. You don't want to be bringing the Lantern into the Lickitung because of the fear of Power Whip, right? So we're going to go ahead and throw Body Slam here. Might have been a bit early. Maybe I could have gotten that farm down. Um, I was feeling iffy about the throw there, but that's all right. I should be able to get to a Rock Slide here against the Jellicent, and uh, we're looking pretty good. But I decide to swap into Dragonair. 
And the reason being is if there is a Bastiodon in the back, obviously Lantern into Jellicent does very well, Lantern into Bastiodon does very well, but I save a lot of health on my Vigoroth so that I can do counter damage against the Bastiodon. So we're going to go ahead and come in with Lantern, hoping that this was a blind surf as well. So we're going to go ahead and no shield, and it was a surf, which is perfect. We get the farm down or near farm down, and there is the Bastiodon. So that is going to be a good game. We're ahead on energy. We have Vigoroth still up. Switch clocks are misaligned as well, so my Vigoroth can easily come onto the field and get free counter damage. Uh, but my opponent is going to go ahead and surrender right here, so that is going to be a good game. Very well played. All right, moving to the next one. Dragonair versus Dugong. Okay, Dugong lead, going to be tough to deal with, so we're going to swap into the Vigoroth right away, get ahead on energy, and there's the Annihilate. Now... You guys might also be recognizing this. I used, I potentially used this team again. We don't want to always assume, but I ran a very strong water double ghost team uh, a few days back, and it was Dugong, Trevenant, and Annihilate. Obviously, we've got two pieces of the puzzle here. So we got Dugong and Annihilate. Annihilate just absolutely hard walls Vigoroth. It doesn't have to shield whatsoever. It can fully farm down. And now my Dragonair is potentially facing off against Ice Punches here. So this is really bad. And if it is, in fact, Trevenant in the back, the Lantern's going to get hard countered with that because of the uh, the resistances and super effective damage, uh, which actually should be pretty cool because my opponent is beating me with my own team, which is a huge flex by them um, be beating me up. But like I said at the beginning of this video, Annihilate uh, was a struggle for this team. Annihilate isn't super popular. It's not on every team. Um, but it has its uh, it has its niche and it's uh, not its niche it has its uh, elo ranges where it does get pretty popular so we're gonna go ahead and bring in the lantern and sure enough uh, there is the trevenant in the back so my opponent tried out uh, my double ghost team that I ran the other day uh, which is pretty cool uh, that they did run it but it's I'm also getting uh, destroyed by it so we're gonna go ahead and let the seed bombs go through. I know this game is over. I'm going to give them the satisfaction of the booms if they want to throw it here. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and let this go. Good game to my opponent. Obviously, triple hard countered in that situation. And the Vigoroth safe swap doesn't have a lot of play against Annihilate um, locking it down. So good battle. All right, next one. We have Dragon uh, Dragonair into Lantern. Very good matchup for us. We do see the drag Shadow Dragonair swapping, so we're going to go ahead and swap into our Vigoroth now that we've got a good amount of health down because what we're going to be able to do in this situation is shield and then look to go for Body Slam to put pressure back on them um, in order to get ourselves uh, ev either even shields and then fully farm down or just take the the one to two switch advantage. So they're going to decide to shield, which is fine. They're going to be able to get another body, uh, another charge move off. Probably going to be body slam. I'm going to shield, and then I'm going to look to fully counter down so that I have body slams ready to go on the back end for this lantern. I should be able to get to two in time, which is a lot of neutral damage. We'll probably get the lantern below 50% HP, which is huge for that matchup, especially with a Dragonair that I have, which is still healthy and has is close to a charge move, right? So we're going to go ahead and throw Body Slam number one, and then we should be able to get to the second one very quickly. Now, they are going to get quite a bit of energy here. Spark is neutral. It's going to be able to take us down, but it's not going to go a lot of places. Um, it's either resisted here on the Dragonair, which again isn't shadow, so it can survive a lot better. Um, but they do swap into Mandiba, so I'm going to go ahead and load up on energy to make sure I have plenty in the back, and then I'm going to bring in the Lantern here. Um, now, the opponent's Lantern has quite a bit of energy, and what I don't want to happen is it gets more energy versus my Dragonair. This is going to be a fine line that I'm going to dance. I'm going to decide to go for Surf right away. I don't build up to Thunderbolt. I could have, um, but I thought, you know what, if I can actually get the Spark down right here, um, I think that might be the play. Could have gone for Thunderbolt and undercharged it to do a bit more because now I'm noticing Dark Pulse does quite a bit. But honestly, this situation I think is better for me. Soft losing this matchup. And the reason being is that Lantern in the back, I do not want it to get energy. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the Surf here and I'm going to undercharge it. I'm going to make sure it doesn't do enough damage to KO Mandibuzz so that I can come in and Dragon Breath down. And as you guys see, they swap out right away. This Lantern does have a Thunderbolt ready to go, 
but we have that dragon typing and we are not shadow which means we might just be able to survive the charge move right here so let's see it is going to be thunderbolt we do survive we get to the body slam in time and this was a finesse play this was a feel and understanding of what was in front of me and how to overcome it boom down it goes and we dragon breath down the mandibus really close battle right there good game to my opponent all right, moving to the next one. Dragonair versus Bastiodon. Okay, so Bastiodon lead. Shadow Victory Bell most likely in the back. We're going to bring in the Vigoroth right away. And they're not swapping out. This is uh, this is an interesting play from them. I'm just going to go ahead and keep loading up on energy. There's no reason for me to really throw. But I will give up a shield here. Obviously, uh, the counter damage is worth keeping Vigoroth alive. And now they bring in Shadow Victory Bell. And this is huge. And I think my opponent might have made a slight mistake by doing this. They waited way too long. And look at the body slam damage that I'm able to put out. That's over 50% HP. Which means I'm going to be getting switch advantage or the 2 to 1 shields right here. While also getting the hardest counter potentially to lantern out onto the field. This is very critical for me as Vigoroth. This is why you don't want it to get ahead on energy take switch advantage right there that's huge final pokemon is going to be a shadow alola nine tails with powder snow so obviously our play here is with lantern and our play is to shield the dazzling gleam that is the hardest hitting charge move left in the game this could be a shield bait and if it is which it's not i was going to have to try to catch the charge move on my dragonair because lantern is my key to victory here right so we're going to go ahead and go for the surf right away we get the final shield i'm fine with throwing surf instantly if they catch it so be it i'm going to be able to have a surf ready to go again um, for the uh, for the Alola Ninetales on the back end had they caught it on Bastiodon, but that is going to be a good game Bastiodon come in cannot do enough damage and uh, they do decide to surrender so good battle very well played All right moving into the next one Dragonair versus Wigglytuff here on the lead This is a tough one. This could potentially be a Bastiodon Wigglytuff core So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the Vigoroth to see what they do and they draw out a victory bell so now we actually have a potential opportunity. We've seen uh, Wigglytuff. We've seen Shadow Victory Bell. And Shadow Victory Bell out on the field is obviously a huge W for the Lantern in the back. But there could be a Bastiodon. And with Wigglytuff and Charm, it actually does very well against Lantern as well. Just because of the neutral damage that can really start to build up. And the Icy Wind debuff as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in with Dragonair. We're going to look to fast move down. We're going to have to no shield uh, the charge move here. Acid spray or leaf blade. I don't think they got enough for sludge bomb, but it could be. Um, but we're just going to let it go. It is going to be leaf blade, so that is totally fine. And now we need to come in with the lantern as soon as we can. And then look to try to see if we can get rid of this Wigglytuff. This is the 2 to 1 shield scenario. So we're going to go ahead and shield. It's going to be icy wind. But to be completely honest... The chip damage plus charm is just way too much. So Shadow Bastiodon actually comes in, which is a very cool Pokemon. Um, they snuck through a, a Smackdown right there. I was kind of annoyed because I thought I threw correctly, but I didn't. Um, Shadow Bastiodon, obviously, looks a bit scary. Smackdowns are really starting to add up. We have to give up our final shield here. Um, and then we have a potential opportunity if we play our energy right along with Dragonair. So we're going to go ahead and go for the Surf now. And this is where the health remaining on Dragonair might just be able to win us the game. So we're going to go ahead and load up. And we're going to swap in and go for the Aqua Tail. Now look at the energy that I left on my Lantern. I left basically a, a two Surfs almost. So Aqua Tail, not enough to KO. We do get the fast move down. They're going to go ahead and come in with Wigglytuff. They're going to get their charms through. But now, since they don't have that much energy, I have to go for the Surf Shield Bait here. This has to get a shield. If it doesn't, it's good game. But if we get the shield, now we could get to the Spark in time. And this, again, another finesse play that we had right here. But unfortunately, they survive with one HP and a dream. Good battle. All right, moving to the next one, Dragonair into Poliwrath. Really nice matchup for us because of the Dragon Breath damage. 
Uh, I do need to watch out for Icy Wind, but we can put down the Hurt here with Body Slam Spam. It's a lot of neutral damage, and with a Polyrath on the lead, odds are uh, there isn't another counter user in the back. It's very unconventional to see an ABA formation with fighters. So I'm perfectly happy with staying in this matchup with Dragonair, especially since we got a shield, to get the Polyrath low and then come in with Lantern and fast move down and look to try to win this game with Vigoroth and Lantern with energy. Right, so we're going to go ahead and throw the body slam. They decide to no shield. We don't want to give up our final shield in this situation. Again, I can spark down um, with the uh, with the lantern. So we're going to go ahead and let it go. We come in with lantern. We get our three sparks in. And now Vigoroth is looking very good. Especially with a lick of tongue um, that decided to come in. So I'm going to go ahead and go for Thunderbolt here. Trying to do some extra chip damage. So that Vigoroth has a much better matchup. Um, in terms of the counter damage that it can do compared to body slams. And now there's going to be a Gligar in the back, a shiny Gligar. And this is where Vigoroth can actually do a lot of work. Um, shiny Gligar here uh, doesn't do super effective damage to us. We are a pseudo fighter. We have access to counter without having the weaknesses that a fighter has, which is going to be flying in this case. So we're going to go ahead and shield the dig though. I thought that might be the hardest hitting move left in the game. And then we're going to go ahead and go for double body slams here. Lantern still has some play um, in this game. Uh, with some energy so we're gonna go ahead and we do get that shield which is nice they're gonna look to go for another dig or aerial ace here but it's not gonna be enough to ko us and now we're gonna see the body slam be able to connect uh, my lantern has a good amount of energy as well or a little bit of energy so they actually decide to swap into lick a tongue and uh, this might be a tough situation for them because by swapping into lick a tongue um, I'm able to now come in with Lantern. Actually, I had no energy. What was I thinking? Sorry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and overload on energy. I was I was speaking too, too early about what I was going to do. I was going to let the Power Whip just go, right? We're going to overload right here and then make sure we get, because we need to get to a Surf there against the Gligar. Gligar just threw back-to-back -back digs, so it's nowhere near um, an Aerial Ace or a Dig. So now we should be able to do three Sparks, and we get it in time to take down the Gligar. So that is going to be a good game, very well played. Again, dancing that fine line of energy to health in order to win some of these ones can be very uh, satisfying. So good battle. All right, moving to the next one, Azumarill. This is a Pokemon this team can actually do very well against. Azumarill, while it is a fairy type, which does well against dragons, its damage only comes from charge moves. So there's a lot of opportunity to be had there um, when you have uh, shields for that matchup. So with this Vigoroth, we're going to go ahead and just go for body slams right here. I'm not too worried about the, uh, about the potential play rough, as we will see it land. And what we see now is a Skarmory come in. So... This could, I'm, I'm very interested to see what Pokemon number three is. Obviously, Lantern can do very well against both Skarmory and the Azumarill. So that's what I'm going to look to uh, to leverage right here is my Lantern with energy. So we're going to go ahead and come in with that. And we're just going to commit to the hard farm down with Spark. The more energy I can get for the later end of this matchup, the better. Especially since they went for Brave Bird, this is going to be an easier farm down before we take too much charge move damage. Now, they decide to bring in Lickitung. So this is actually pretty good for us. The Azumarill is out of energy, right? It threw the play rough into the Vigoroth. And it's also relatively, it's at like 60% health, 50% health. And as you guys can see, this matchup in terms of fast move damage to us is nothing. But if you guys look at the health remaining on Azumarill, our Dragonair can do a lot of great damage with Body Slam. And they only have one shield remaining. So this is a matchup, like I said earlier, um, isn't as terrible when you come into it in the right situation. Because when you have the shield advantage, when you have the health advantage right here, Dragonair can do very well against Fairy-type Pokemon who don't have fast move pressure against you. Wigglytuff did in that previous matchup and Charm really shredded us. But now Dragonair is going to be carrying uh, this team because we're going to go ahead and give up the final shield. And uh, this is going to force Lickitung now to commit all energy here into the Dragonair, which is going to allow Lantern to sweep this game potentially because look at how much health we have remaining. If you guys remember how much damage Power Whip did, like 40-50%, we're going to be able to survive that relatively easily with our Lantern and uh, 
we're just gonna look to uh, to go for body slam here after this body slam obviously you don't want to get farmed down by Lickitung to give them an advantage our switch clock is up we need to swap into lantern and we're gonna go ahead and go for the surf to knock out the Lickitung so that is gonna be a good game very well played boom see ya so good battle right there I believe that was the final one nope no oh, not even close sorry Next battle, Trevenant. We got a few more. I should have looked at the time over here, not uh, thinking over here. All right, Lickitung swap in. We lo overload a bit on energy right there with Dragonair. We come in with the Lickitung, and what we want to do is maintain positive switch advantage. We do not want Trevenant aligned to the Lantern, and we also want to have the ability to get to Rock Slides against Trevenant. In order for Trevenant to take us down, it's going to either have to hard commit with Shadow Claw, depending on how much health we have remaining, or it's going to have to throw a Seed Bomb. So we're going to look to go for Body Slam here and then try to fast move down so that we can throw two Rock Slides against the Trevenant. That's going to be enough to put Shield Pressure on them as we uh, we do get the farm down. Now, Vigoroth's health here is low enough where Shadow Claws, even though it is resisted, is going to be able to get the, uh, the farm down. But in order to do so, they're going to have to allow me to throw... Uh, double rock slides and honestly this trevenant doesn't have enough energy to throw a seed bomb before i can do that so there's rock slide number one as you guys can see that was like 48 percent hp like barely 50 percent which means this next rock slide is probably going to ko or it's going to be getting the first shield of this game so we do get the shield and they do get the farm down but i get to the body slam just in time now this obviously isn't going to ko but i will take any extra chip damage that i can get that's a good amount of damage taken away from the Trevenant. And we're going to go ahead and look to no shield this. I don't know what they have in the back. It could be Bastiodon, could be Reggie Steel, um, but it is going to be the Bastiodon. So Lantern's going to take this, obviously. Two to one shields. We have even energy, even health, and they will decide to surrender. All right, moving to the next one. Shadow Victory Bell in the lead. Very nice for us. They're likely going to be swapping out, and they swap out into a Dugong. So we're going to go ahead and bring in the Vigoroth. Now, you and I can both assume that with a Dugong safe swap, a Shadow Victory Bell lead, it is most likely a Bastiodon in the back. Um, and Vigoroth here can do very well against the Dugong. I know Lantern can as well, right? With Spark and Thunderbolt. The trouble is, is that uh, the Dugong can hit back with Drill Run. So it can be a dicey situation. What I would rather have is soft winning, or I win this switch advantage, obviously. But I should be able to get to two body slams here against the Shadow Victory Bell, which is going to be very nice. That energy to damage um, is going to be very beneficial as compared to Lantern, which would only do resisted, right? So we're going to be able to get the double body slam off. This is going to get the Shadow Victory Bell well below 50% HP, around the 33.33 repeating, of course. Way less than that, actually. And then Dragonair is going to be able to shred down. There's the Bastidon. Now we are in the 1 to 2 shield scenario. So this isn't as straightforward as you think it might be. In order to win this, I'm going to need to really leverage my Dragonair and its ability um, to close games out. So we're going to go ahead and just go for as many surfs as possible. They keep getting the fast moves through and I'm like, I thought my timing was perfect right there, but it, it wasn't. Maybe the uh, spinning ball right there is throwing me off, but I'm going to go ahead and throw. There's another one that gets through. I gave him two free fast moves, so I'm kicking myself um, in the butt right here. Uh, for letting all these fast moves go through, but I should be able to get enough spark, enough surfs through where they're going to try to commit to the farm down, um, but I think if they do that, I get way too many surfs. Now, I got the final shield there, which is perfect, and I get to the last surf in time. This is critical. This is absolutely critical because this remaining health that we got is going to allow our Dragonair to get the Aqua Tail off. We still have a shield remaining, so obviously... The, uh, the Stone Edge is what we want to stop, but I'm very cautious of them trying to catch the Aqua Tail on the Shadow Victory Bell. So I'm going to go ahead and let the Stone Edge, I decided to let the Stone Edge go through. They swap into Victory Bell, I get the fast move down, and now we have the Aqua Tail ready to go. So that is going to be a good game, very well played. Uh, Dragonair again, like I said, uh, can close this game out for us if we give it that shield. So good battle. Alright, 
Moving into the last battle, we have Lantern on the lead once again, very positive lead for us, and this is Water Gun Lantern, which is actually even better, uh, because it's not going to be gaining energy very quickly, and uh, the charge moves can do a good amount of chunk, a uh, good amount of chunk, um, I'm talking like my toddlers, uh, it can do a it can do a good amount of damage. So I'm gonna go ahead and give up a shield here. It is gonna be the Thunderbolt, and I'm gonna go ahead and commit to that farm down. I don't know what they have in the back, but clearly they're very concerned about the Dragonair. So I think keeping it alive might be uh, beneficial to me. My thought is with Water Gun Lantern, there might be a Grass type in the back. That's what I'm feeling. We do see Dugong come in, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the Vigoroth, and there is a Charger Bug. So it wasn't a Grass. But it makes sense with a Charge Bug and Dugong um, having a weakness to stuff like Bastiodon and Talonflame um, in terms of the typing and damage it can do, right? That Water Gun Lantern makes sense there. Um, and Water Gun Lantern as well does better against Whizcash, which Charge Bug uh, could sh uh, sometimes struggle against depending on energy and shields. But because of this, we're going to be able to, uh, to easily take this game as we will have switch alignment with our Lantern into the Dugong. We have two shields taken away, so we have the 1-0 to zero right now. Our uh, Dragonair is still healthy, and uh, Lantern is uh, lurking in the back. And we can easily get to a body slam in this situation to get the Charger Bug low. And then that's that seals the deal there, right? We're going to save our shield for our Lantern because we will see them swap in with the Dugong. Hardest hitting move left in this game is going to be that Drill Run. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we can let it go. Um, obviously, it's not a one shot. Um, it is uh, two of them. You, you won't like two of them. So we just go for the Thunderbolt right away. And now this is a good game. We can give the shield to Dragonair if we want to, to Dragon Breath down, boom! Or we can uh, we can go for the uh, Spark and Surf combination here, which is what we're going to look to do. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, oh, I decided to no shield the X-Scissor. Uh, we go for the Surf, so that is going to be a good game, very well played. Uh, this team, like I said, very strong. It makes sense why it's a top performer because it just did so well and so cons it was so consistent against a lot of common teams. You just really got to watch out for Annihilates that are on back lines, which is why you guys saw that um, Dugong Trevenant Annihilate team that I ran earlier. Uh, when I faced off against it, it just destroyed me. I was already triple hard countered, but the Annihilate into Vigoroth can be very tough to deal with. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Give this team a try. Be sure to go check out the top performing teams on PV Poke as we are a few days away from the new season. And like always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.